Hello everyone. Um, so a few days ago, I wondered if it would be possible to create logic gates in Besiege. And if you have logic gates, you can make circuits. So I thought it'd be worth trying. Um, I later found out while doing this that a few people have tried to make logic gates before, but they all required uh, cogs and lots of user input, like pistons and stuff to move the cogs. And I don't know, it wasn't very practical. Um, my goal here was to try and make logic gates that could work automatically with absolutely no user input other than just activating it at the start. Um, so I'll dive in and uh, explain what I did. So let's go to the first one. Um, so what I did here was I used water jets because water jets, as far as I know, are the only things that have these two states. So you have just shooting water, which doesn't actually provide much power, but when you apply heat to it, it produces power and we can use this switching to create logic gates. Um, so here we have a buffer gate. So when the input is off, the output is off. But when I turn the input on, the output will come on. So it just it just mirrors what the input is. It may seem useless, but it's actually important and um, I'll explain why a little bit later. So this is the not gate. So it's the the opposite of a buffer gate. So when the out the input is off, the output is on. But when the input is on, the output is off. So it just swaps it around, which is a very handy thing to have. Um, this is the nor um, sorry an OR gate. So when both the inputs are off, the output is off. But when either or both of the inputs are on, the output is on. Pretty handy. And this is the NOR gate. So it's the opposite of the OR gate. Um, it's on except when either or both of the inputs are on. So it turns itself off. This is a special gate because it's what's known as a universal gate, which means you can use this to represent any other logic or yeah logic function or logic gate. So important. Um, this is an AND gate. So this is made up of a NOR gate and two invert inverters. Let me just double check that. Yes, yeah, a NOR gate to inverters. So this only turns on when both the inputs are on. So I could do one of them, doesn't do anything. Do the other one, doesn't do anything. Only when I do both does it turn on. So this is an AND gate. So when that and that are on, the output is on. And this is the opposite of that. This is a NAND gate. So this is on except when both the inputs are on. So as you can see, does nothing, does nothing, turns off. So that's a NAND gate. And like the NOR gate, this is um, a universal gate. So it's special in that it can represent any other logic function using just these. But in Besiege, in this case, because this is like uh, three mechanisms, it's easier to just use a NOR gate to create the base stuff. Um, here we have an XOR gate. So this is only true when this is only on when one or when only one of the inputs is on. So if both of them are off, the output is off. If both the inputs are on, the output is off. Only when one of the inputs is on and the other is off, is it on. So I'll show you that. So this is just one input on, turns on. Both inputs on, turns off. Both inputs off, it's off. Does a little bounce, but it's off. Um, so this has a few buffers in it. Now, uh, like you may have thought that buffers were a bit useless when I said all they do is mimic what the input is, but when you're dealing with something this slow, it's actually important to keep the propagation even. So as you can see, it takes time for things to move. So like this is a buffer here. So when the input comes on, this will just come on and activate this rather than just going directly to it. That's so that the propagation when it gets to this point is even. As you can see, look. Well, okay, hold on. Let me try this one. Okay, probably not a very good example. Okay, that's not actually the inverter. One of the, these are the inverters, but <laughs> it's the, the rule is the same. Or buffers, inverters. I don't. I don't know. But basically, the buffer is important for propagation management. It's been a while since I made these. Um, okay, so what can we do with these logic gates? Because those are all the basic logic gates, except there's what there is one more. There's an XOR gate, which is basically the opposite the opposite of the XOR gate. 
Um, so here we have latches. Now, latches basically store data. So this is really handy. So here, uh, you see this one's off, this one's on. But if we apply heat to this, it swaps it around. Do that, it swaps it around. But when I remove it, both inputs are off, it just keeps its state. So this is basically a stored bit. This is data. Um, if you're wondering how similar to actual electronics this is, it's pretty similar on a logic level because if I apply, if both of these are on, it actually enters uh, an invalid state. See, both of these turn off. That's not meant to happen, but that actually happens in electronics as well. You have to have either both off to keep a state or just one of them on. If you have both on, it's invalid. Now, one way to keep this safe would actually be to have just one input and then an inverter to the other one. So you're always, you only have a, ever have one input and it always just has one of these on because the other, you know, it's an inverted thing. Um, I might make that at a later point, but that's a NOR latch. So that's built using NOR gates, which is why the invalid state is when it's high. So this is a, the same latch, but it has the same functionality, but it's built using NAND gates. Now this is different in that the invalid state is present, but it's only it's only there when both the inputs are off. So to actually latch the state in a NAND latch, both inputs have to be on. So you swap it by turning one low like that, or turning one off. As you can see, turn it off, sets it, turn it on, keeps its state. So the thing with this, like especially with this propagation, like the delay in things moving about, is that something like this, which is basically uh, symmetrical, it's it's a mirror image. If I apply both, if I apply both inputs at the same time, this will oscillate simply because of the delay in the switching time of this stuff. So you have to be aware that that will cause issues. So if you were if you were to build an actual circuit that has like a clock and stuff, that clock would have to be long enough that the whole system, the whole circuit could propagate properly and not mess up. Um, so that's logic gates and a couple of latches. There is one more thing I want to show off because it, it just shows what else you can do with these things. I'm just, I'm just deleting that so it runs a bit better when I'm doing it. Okay, so let's activate this. This is an edge triggered D flip flop with set and reset. Um, so something worth noting here is that oh, pardon me, the set and reset are active low. So this is actually an invalid state. We have to set, well, we'll just do one of them first. So as you can see, that's set to one because this is active low, this is set. So if I turn it on again, it keeps its state. If I reset it, you can see it turns that off and turns this one on. So both of them are up at the moment, which means there's gonna be no change. But these, these inputs here are just to force it to a certain state. Generally, what we, we, what we would be doing is using this, this input here, which is the data, and this input here, which is the clock. So I can try and set data here. As you can see, it does nothing. But if I do the clock, it will set it. Now, I'm gonna, I've got them both on still. I'm gonna turn the data off. So we're trying to set a zero. As you can see, it doesn't change. So let's get rid of the clock. And we'll put the clock back on again, knowing that we've got a zero waiting here. And you'll see it clocks it in. It latches the zero over here. So what if I wanted to do a one now? Same process. I try and add a one doesn't do anything until the next clock cycle. As you can see, it latches the one. So that's why this is an interesting circuit. It shows what you can do with these logic gates. And essentially, if you had eight of these, you could build an eight bit shift register and you could build an automatic clock for that. So you'd have absolutely no user input and it could store data, it could shift data. Uh, you could do all sorts with these logic gates. You could essentially build a very basic computer with them, which requires no user input. Uh, the problem being, obviously, and it's the same problem Redstone has with Minecraft, 
is the sheer amount of time something like that would take to do anything. Um, just because of the propagation time, like all this just takes so much time that and to handle the timing like your clock would have to be long enough to wait for the like the most complicated circuit in your system so yeah it, could, it would be tricky i mean it's possible i mean it would be a lag fest for me and besiege obviously as you can see i just lagged a little bit there a little lag spike and besiege physics mess up so, yeah it's it's i don't know it's crazy but yeah, you could essentially build a computer out of this, and I think I'll do more videos on this subject, um, like building different models and stuff like that, and see what we can do. Let me just come out of that, get my logic gates back. So I will upload these to the workshop for Besiege, so anyone who wants to can play with them, they can build their own circuits and stuff like that. And you know, I'm sure, I'm sure people will come up with much better ways of um, doing this. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen anyone, I haven't seen anything like this before in Besiege that actually, you know, works automatically like this. So, you know, I'm sure people see this and then better it in some way. So that would be cool. And I might even do a video later on that shows off some of my other failed attempts. Well, not failed attempts, but different approaches. Because this is sort of like the most balanced one, but there are others that just look cool and just behave in very weird ways. Um, so I look forward to showing those off as well. But yeah, these will be on the workshop. I'll put links in the video. Um, so thank you for watching and see you later.